Now, so last week or last time we studied the um, quantum Fourier transform, right? We look at what is one qubit and two qubits quantum Fourier transform. That is easy. It's only a substitution, uh, but it's not very useful because you want to know how to implement it, right? You cannot expect people to give you a quantum Fourier transform gate. It actually is a complicated circuit. So today we will try to implement it. We won't prove it because uh, even try to prove one of the uh, small cases uh, took a lot of time. So this semester I, I, I removed that portion by replaced by quantum phase estimation. So today we will do quantum phase estimation also. Right. So before we continue to understand how to implement the quantum Fourier transform, we want to just make sure that we understand what is a multi-qubit swap gate, because this is what we are going to uh, use in the quantum Fourier transform circuit. Okay. So what is a swap gate again? A swap gate, of course, it must be a unitary gate. And then if I write it as A, B, right, in the basis. And we all remember that the so-called, the definition of any quantum gate is on how it rotates the basis state, right? So when I write A, B, how many qubits do I have here? Two, I'm referring to two qubits, right? So A can be zero, can be one, B can be zero, can be one. After this swap gate, what do you get? By definition, huh? B A, yeah. It becomes the basis that is B A. For example, I apply uh, U swap gate to one zero is going to give me zero one, right? Because now A is one, B is zero. This is the definition. So how about multi uh, multi qubit, right? So I can call it. I can call it U swap i call it n qubit okay why is it correct i apply to x0 x1 all the way to xn minus 1 right is this n qubit right again i define the swap gate any quantum gates by how it rotates the basis state this is one of the basis state right X, I can take any value of zero or one. Can you guess what it will become after you do this swap gate for n qubit? Just reverse the, you say you just reverse the order, right? Maybe I can spell this out also. X n minus two, all the way to X one, X zero. This is a natural definition, and indeed, this is the definition of the swap gate of multi-qubit. Okay, so how do we implement multi-qubits, right? How do we can implement using the two-qubit swap gate? Right, this is a very straightforward some of you may think i'm wasting your time but let's just make it uh very clear right because this class is to make sure that you understand every qubit how they evolve right one by one so i can say if i want to implement the swap n qubit from x0 x1 all the way to x n minus 1 x i mean i already have x n minus 1 i say that it is actually equals to swapping n over 2 minus 1 with n over 2 and all the way to swapping the first qubit and n minus two, maybe I can add a bracket and then swap 
0 and n minus 1. Do you agree? Right, we try to write out just now you're doing computer programming, right? To swap this one is that I will swap this one first. Swap 0 and n minus 1. Then swap x1 and n minus 2. All the way to n divided by 2 minus 1 and n divided by 2. By assuming n is even. Right? Because n is even, that's why I can use n divided by 2. If n is odd, what should we do? Just don't swap the middle one. Yeah? Good. Yeah. So I think we all understand, right? I write it so long uh, so that you really understand it because if you can write this, you can program it, right? I just show one step. I keep doing the swap of n divided by 2 minus 1, n divided by 2, I keep this, swap 1, n minus 2, and this becomes what? When I swap 0 and n minus 1, I get x, n minus 1, x1, x2, all the way to x, n minus 2, x0. Do you see that? I apply swap. On the first and the last qubit, n and n minus, I mean 0 and n minus 1. That's why I get x n minus 1. The others doesn't do not change. And x0. Is that okay? So eventually you keep doing this, you get x n minus 1, x n minus 2, all the way to x2, x1, x0. That is the definition or how you implement a multiple qubit swap gate by using two qubit swap gate. Is that clear? Yeah. And this swap is not just rotating. You do need to do the refraction, right? You cannot just like, I know we were talking about cycling, like the shift register. But uh, this, you cannot just do shift register. It's not swapping because you were just cycling that. Yeah. But there is a good, I don't know about this gate, but I think uh, uh, by definition, we should have, we can have one of these gates, right? Because we're just defining how it map from one gate to another, one basis state to another basis state. Yeah, so you always give some new idea I can include in the final. <laughs> okay. So how do we draw the circuit? It's also very easy, right? If you remember the so-called two qubit swap gate, right? For two qubits. Now we used to draw this, which is okay. Now in IBM Q or some other source, they use this as the swap gate, right? There are two possible, I mean, two common way to draw the swap gate, right? So what if I have uh, a five qubit swap gate. Uh, let's say my input. My let's say my input is one zero one zero zero. This is my input. Okay. So how do I draw a five qubit swap gate? I can draw it like this. I don't draw it well. Okay, this this is a symbol, right? So what do you get after swap? What is the output? Zero, zero, one, zero, one, right? Because you just, the last one become the first one, second last one becomes the second one, third last one becomes the third one, okay? And of course, I can also say that based on what we studied earlier, it is just like I first swap the first pair using this two qubit swap gate. Then I swap the second pair using this two qubit swap gate. And then finally, I don't swap the middle pair. Right? That is one way, right? Or I can draw it using the IBM Q notation. 
I first have a two qubit swap gate, swapping this, then another swap, swap gate, swapping this, and then finally, I don't need to do anything, right? The middle one is swapping with itself, right? In this particular case, it doesn't matter. I can call this LSB or MSB. It really is symmetric, right? So that, that's it about the swap gate, okay? So with this swap gate, then we can start implement the uh, quantum uh, Fourier tra transform circuit. Do you remember what is the one cubic quantum Fourier transform equivalent to what? U QFT, one qubit is what? Remember, we proved last time in the last lecture. Hmm? Equals to H. So how you do you implement this circuit? Easy. This is also equal to QFT1. Okay? That is the one qubit uh, quantum Fourier transform gate. So okay? Now, then how do I implement the... Let me see. This is going to be a very complicated one. How do I implement the two qubit one? The first thing I need to know is what is the two qubit, right? It's not easy. I will just give you the answer. And then we try to, try to prove that that is correct. Two qubit QFT, UQFT2. No. What did we prove last time? Someone say, is it a harder market tensor product with itself? No. If you tensor product itself, you just get a two qubit harder market. Yeah? So, no. So let me give you uh, the answer, I mean, the matrix we got last time, which I need to look at cheat sheet also, but you know that this must be one, 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 right? And then this is negative one, I mean, negative I, negative one, I, negative one, one, negative one, I, negative one, negative I. So basically we're saying that how do I implement a circuit that has an effective matrix equal to this, okay? Then, of course, uh, those smart guys, they came up with some algorithm last year I tried to discuss, but it took a lot of time. I don't think it's necessary, right? This is the result. First, you have a Hadama gate, which, which makes sense. It must be related to Hadama gate because there's some uh, uh, quantum Fourier, uh, some uh, superposition going on. Then, the second qubit will be also Hadama gate, but after it, it has a, this gate. It has a phase shift gate, which it is with this value. I, I need to draw it better. It has a phase shift gate. Phase shift by how much? Negative. 2 pi divided by 2 to the power 2. Okay, my goal is to write the form instead of reducing it. But this is a control phase shift gate. And finally, a swap gate. That is how you get the, uh, how, you, how you implement a 2 qubit quantum Fourier transform gate. Okay, now later I will show you the general circuit, but you can see here, right? All the general circuit is related to Hadama gate, Hadama gate with a phase shift gate, Hadama gate with more phase shift gate on each qubit, and eventually you have a swap gate. Okay, we'll not talk, talk about this later, but here I actually use as a cheat sheet, right? So this is LSB. This is MSB. Okay, so what is a phase shift gate? Do you remember? Phase shift gate with an angle equal to 2 pi over 2 to the power 2, it means what? Do you remember what is a phase shift gate? It means it is 1, 0, 1, I mean 0, e to the power 
I phi, right? With phi equals to negative 2 pi over 2 to the power 2. Okay, then what is a control phase shift gate? It means the con when the control qubit is 1, you have this action, right? So it must be a control phase shift gate with a phase shift of 2 pi over 2 to the power 2. It is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, e to the power i times negative 2 pi divided by 2 to the power 2. Is this okay? A control phase shift gate. Right? This is the control version. Right? So what is e to the power i negative 2 pi divided by 2 to power 2? It's equal to e to the power i negative pi over 2, right? Which is equal to cosine negative pi divided by 2 plus i psi negative pi divided by 2, which is what? Negative i. Yeah? Negative i. Now, there is one thing, actually, you might feel confusing now. Some of you should feel that. This is the LSB as the controlling qubit. What I'm trying to tell you that usually this one is the, I present in like a MSB as controlling qubit. But that doesn't matter because only when both of them are one, you, would you get a phase shift. Right? Because the phase shift gates by the definition itself is that the one component will get e to the power i. And then you only have this when the other, the control qubit is one. Right? So whether you are the LSB or MSB as the controlling qubit, you still have the same form. Okay? Now, so this is the phase shift gate, right? So let me challenge you, or maybe we can even test you in the exam. How do I construct this one? How do I construct these gates from a more primitive, primitive uh, version? Control phase shift is just equal to when it is zero, you get identity. When it is one in the controlling qubit, you get phase shift gate, right? We discussed this before. Uh, see if you can understand. If not, then understand in what I just said. When it is one for the least significant qubit, you tensor product with the phase shift gate. When it is zero, you tensor product with I, right? And I cannot help, I really want to try this to see if this is correct, right? Why don't we just quickly try? Uh, when this is zero, tensor product zero, what is this? Outer, outer product, sorry, not tensor product. What is this? What is outer product of zeros? One, zero, 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 right? You just put in row and column form, right? And then I tensor product with one, zero, zero, one. Yeah, then this whole thing only get me the one zero, one one in this column, the rest are zero. Similarly, this one is going to give me zero, 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 one, right? I hope if you don't see it, remember what is one here is one zero column vector. This is, oh no, this is zero one column vector. This is zero one row vector. You will get this, right? When you do the outer product, right? And now I tensor product this with the phase shift gate. I just keep it. I don't want to write it. Basically, what you say is that you only put this one at the lower corner. Right? So I proved to you what I wrote was correct. So try to think from all this direction to get very familiar with the matrix. Uh, because it gives you a lot of insights and you will be able to understand more complicated algorithms and also invent your own algorithm.
Okay. Any questions? So you trust me, then I am going to feel that the construction of quantum Fourier transform circuits must be at the end have a uh, swap gate. Before it, the lower significant cube significant bit just pick a hard Dharma gate. The next one, you put a hard Dharma gate and do a control phase shift based on the earlier gate. Okay. Now let's try to prove this is correct. Uh, it's, it will be a good exercise. Let me draw this again. This is the circuits that we have. As I said, the LSB get H, the MSB get phase control phase shift of negative two pi divided by two to the power two. And then we have a swap gate and we have a H in front. This is LSB, this is MSB, right? What is the first matrix that we have? That the vector, right? Again, for circuit signal go from left to right. For matrix, it go from right to left, right? So what is the first matrix that you apply that, that represent this circuit that happened in this circuit? What I'm saying is how do you use matrix to represent this part? Say again, H tensor product I. Very good, right? After H tensor product Y, I, what do you get? Control, phase shift gate, 2 pi over 4. Okay, and after that, what do you get? I tensor product H, right? And after that, what do you get? A swap gate. And this is 2 qubit. We already know what it is, right? So this is UQFT2 actually equal to this one. Do you agree? Okay. Then we do this one by one. I wonder if you remember what is the matrix of a swap gate. I remember. Exactly. Only swap the middle, right? Because again, we always say that this matrix is telling you how you couple the uh, basis state to another basis state. So for the zero zero basis state, it coupled to itself, right? That's why it's one zero zero and here, right? But then you swap the one zero, right? One zero becomes zero one, zero one become one zero. For one one, again, you couple to itself, right? I mean, it transform to itself. What is I tensor product H? Maybe you forgot. I, one, one, and then put in the H matrix in the one location, right? I'm going rather fast. So it is one, one, negative one, zero, 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 one, 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 negative one, right? Do you see how I get this? I did not look at my cheat sheet. Right? Because I have I know this harder market is one over square root two. And this is this one is one. This is one, right? This is zero as zero for the identity matrix, right? When you do the tensor product, you just put the whole H here and H here. Zero times H, zero times H for a tensor product. Make sense? Right? Then you get this. Okay. And what is the phase shift gate? We already know that. I already showed that in the last slide. And what is that? That is one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero 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 negative i. Right? I remember that. This is negative i. Make sense? And then is my problem. I did not draw it well. I continue to multiply by what? H tensor product I, what is that? Okay, so good. So he said H, right? One, one, negative one, one, and then you put in the identity, right? Yeah, so that is, I'm going to write this in this way. 
First of all, do not forget 1 over square root 2. Right? I always forget this, but no problem. At the end, you find that your vector is not normalized or your matrix is not unitary. Then you just check this. Okay? So 1, the first column, uh, the first corner top left is 1. 1 times identity is 1, 0, 0, 1. The top right is again 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Lower left, 1, 0, 0, 1. And lower right is negative 1, right? So multiply to 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Okay? That's how you do it. So do we still need to go full step by step? L let's do that, right? I will do it fast. First, I take out 1 over 2. And then I keep the rest, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. That is the, uh, the swap gate. And then the second one, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. I miss 1 here. 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, negative 0. And then we do multiplication, right? You see that when I do this multiplication, this one, you just copy the first row. This one copy the second row. This one copy the third row. And this one will just multiply the fourth row by negative i. Right? Think about this. This is this row times this column, right? Do you see that? This row times this column. So you only would take this value. And then this row times this column. You will only take this value. Is that okay? I hope you, you, you can have this instinct instead of messing up, right? Because when you're doing matrix, the first element is this one times this, plus this one times this, plus this one times this, plus this one times this. And I only have one here, so I'm only taking this one. Then the next element is this whole thing times this column, so it, I'm just copying this. One. It's just like filter, okay? Image filter you do in the convolution neural network, like this, right? So it will get, and indeed, it's all matrix, all this uh, convolution network, right? Computer vision is just matrix. So I copy 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, negative 1, and then 0, negative i, 0, positive i, because I need to multiply by that. So if we have gained this type of insight, the next one is a little bit more difficult, but it's not really. Think about this. Now I'm going to multiply this column with this one. Again, it only have effect. It just copy this, but only copy the one, right? Because zero has no effect. So basically, the first time I get one, 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 right? Because one times one, this one is zero. One times zero, zero times zero, one, right? And this two has no effect because it's zero. Second one is doing subtraction, but again, uh, the first column just one, the second column becomes negative one. A uh, second row, I'm sorry, right? One times one, one times one, but negative one times one, negative times one, I get negative one. Okay, do you see this? Similarly, I do it in the fourth one, or I did just like merging the third and fourth column, so this actually gives us some intuition, right? You see that, oh, this type of matrix is going to merge them. So in the future, if you have an idea, I want to merge something, then that's great. Maybe you can try this matrix, right? So this becomes 1, negative i, negative 1. And when I see this, I know I have typo. Because uh, a good algorithm should not certainly have 1 plus i, right? So I should have a typo, and then I check, indeed I have a typo. This one should be zero, I copy it as one. So that's why you want to have this uh, for thinking all the way. That can help you to avoid problem. Of course, nowadays you have MATLAB, it's easy. Right, and then the last one, just like before, we just put negative to the fourth row, and then I get this. Is that okay? And finally, finally, of course, this is just copying, like what we say, right? This is a swap gate. What it does is to keep the first row and then take the third row to the second row because it's a swap gate. 
and then put the second row to the third row. No, I did it wrong. The second row to the third row should be negative one, one, negative one, and then keep the fourth row. I, negative one, negative. Negative. Sorry for the right thing, but you see that, right? And let me check the cheat sheet. I think I'm correct. Yeah, and this is exactly what we wrote last time. Last time we get this one by using the definition. Do, do you remember the definition of the quantum Fourier transform? You have one over square root two to the power two, right? Or two to the power n, right? And then omega minus j k, right? Where was omega for this case? e to the power i two pi over n, what is n here? Which is two to the power two, right? Huh? Hey, two to the power pi e to the power i to the power two pi over to the power two. Do you see some similarity here? So it's very natural. You should have a phase shift gate in order to generate this omega, right? If I were the inventor of the quantum Fourier transform, right, I, I they might go from more elegant theory to come up with this. But if I just need to come from scratch, I definitely would think I need to have something that gives me e to the power negative i to uh, 2 pi over to the power 2. That's very natural. Then if you have a 3 qubit, what do you expect? I have 2 e to the power i 2 pi over 2 to the power 3. I should have 2 to the power 3. But I also have other terms, of course, right? And that's why in a general quantum Fourier transform circuit, you have the swap gate at the end, the first qubit just h, the second qubit c the h, and then you have phase shift gate of negative 2 pi over 2 to the power 2, and then this, right? Then how do they do it? Okay, the control gate is like this. For every qubit, you will get phase shift gate, but the number of phase shift gate depends on how many smaller, I mean, least significant bit, more least significant bit, I mean, more less significant bit than you. I'm here, only one bit is less significant than me. So I only control by it, I get one phase shift gate. When I'm the third qubit, I have two qubits that is less significant than me. Then I get two phase shift gate. If I am the last qubit, I have n minus 1 uh, less significant qubits than me. Then I have n minus 1 phase shift gate. But how much do I shift? Then it depends on how far the gate is from me. If it is next to me, it is negative 2 pi divided by 2 to the power 2. Next to me is 2. One more away to me from me is 3. So if I'm at the last one, I will get the next one that is next to me is 2 to the power 2. The furthest away from me is n minus 1, right? But it is n, right? So I also get negative 2 pi divided by 2 to the power n. Now that's how I try to memorize the circuit. It makes sense, particularly we realize that in a general quantum Fourier uh, or discrete Fourier transform, quantum Fourier transform, you have e to the power 2 i 2 pi divided by 2 to the power n. So I must have a phase shift gate that gives me 2 to the power n. 
right? And I just remember two to the power n, and then I just keep subtracting, right? And that is the quantum Fourier transform. Is this okay? Any questions? Yeah. Oh yeah, they try it, but then uh, after a few QP, it's all error. You did, yeah, yeah. A lot of what? Yeah, uh, yeah, saying that here you only operate on one qubit, and here you, uh, not really. Think about this is a, uh, you can say imbalance, but again, this is laser pulse or microwave pulse, right? Your six, your 10 electrons are sitting there. What I'm doing, just apply the hard matrix to the first one, and then control operation between the first one and the second one, and then control operation with the first one, the third one, and then control operation of the first one and the fourth one. And then I repeat for the rest. It's just like a permutation. Not permutation, a combination, right? I first one, one, two, do a pulse, one, three, do a pulse, and then two, three, do a pulse, two, four, do a pulse, and then three, four, do a pulse. Right? So from this pers perspective, it's not imbalance. But if you look from a classical circuit perspective, it looks like imbalance in, the, in terms of drawing. Yeah? And then eventually the swap gate. Yeah, so timing is very critical. That's why you want the gate, what we call it gate time, means that how much time you need to finish a gate to be much shorter than the coherence time, right? And if the coherence time is short, then you before you finish the computation, all energy information are lost. Yeah, oh, good, uh, very good question. Yeah. Not, not necessarily. For matrix multiplication, you can go from right to left also because they are associative. You can group them, right? A times B times C equal to A times B and then times C or A, B times C first and then A times B. But you just cannot reorder them, but you can do them at different order, right? Yeah, but it just, I like to go from right to left. Okay, particularly when you want to see the intermediate result, like what is here, right? Once I get this matrix, I will be able to know what is here by applying my gate, uh, my input state. Yeah, good. Okay, now, so this is the general circuit. Now, how do we implement, for example, here, I try to implement a free qubit case in the IBM Q. This is real hardware. Again, IBM Q is, this is LSB, this is MSB, right? So LSB, as I told you, right? That's how I memorize it. Just get a Hadama gate, okay? Then the second bit, get a Hadama gate, and then phase shift. By how much? By how many less significant bit than you? I only have one. I'm going to control by it, and shift by negative pi divided by two, which is negative, 2 pi divided by 2 to the power 2, okay? For qubit, see Hadama gate. First, you will get a phase shift gate by the one next to you, which is also negative pi divided by 2. Right, let me remind you, this is just e to the power negative i 2 pi divided by 2 to the power 2. That's why it's pi divided by 2, right? This one is e to the power negative i, 2 pi divided by 2 to the power 3. That's why it becomes pi divided by 4. Okay, this is just a control phase shift gate, right? Of course, you don't see e because it only talk about the phase, right? After that, we do a swap gate. This is a three qubit swap gate, although we only use one qubit, a two qubit swap gate because the middle one does not need to swap. Right, so equivalent, this is a free qubit swap gate. I just need to swap the ending, the extreme, the extremum, right? And then I do the measurement. What do I expect? Remember what is the input? Zero, zero, zero. This is like DC, right? The first element. The element, this is just equal to one, and I eight qubit, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the input. 
And then I multiply that by the quantum Fourier transform. And you know very well what is the form of the QFT for free qubits, although I don't know what it is. I, I need to derive, but I'm very sure it is one, 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 right? This part I don't know, I need to find. But doesn't matter because the input is one zero zero zero, right? So only this column mat matters. I mean, it's only this column matters, right? So I multiply it one over square root eight. Multiply it one over square root eight. So the result must be, if this one, let me be clear. Then I have u q f t three times zero zero zero. It must give me what? 1 over square root 8 of 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Make sense? Just a DC signal, just like discrete Fourier transform. A DC signal gives you all the frequency components. So when I measure, I should get 1 over 8, right? Square root, square of 1 over square root 1 over 8. These are about almost the same. And I did 1,000, so this is about 125, 0.15. And why they're different? Noise, yeah, error. Not too bad, right? You know, you see, uh, if I only care about seeing their relative uh, size, this is like right, for a human or a machine learning. They are just the same as everything is one over eight. So actually, that is our experience also when we do a more sophisticated algorithm. This type of algorithm is not a problem. The problem is that later you utilize it to do some constructive and destructive interference. You utilize to make decisions. For example, you say that if they're exactly the same, then I make this, this the, the tomorrow is going to rain. If they are not exactly the same, tomorrow is going to be sunny. That's the oracle, for example. Now, because of this tiny error, and what we're doing is the why well, we call it amplification uh, of the results, right? Because exactly the same, it goes to sunny, a little bit different, it goes to rain. Then it amplifies the error a lot. So if you rely on algorithm on this, then you will run into problem, right? You have a question? Okay, and indeed, uh, I can send you our paper later, right? We also try HHL algorithm based on this, and we try to look at the error. Every, all the way, although it has error, it's a big circuit, it's all very good, but eventually it has problem when we try to reconstruct the inverse quantum Fourier transform to make it, uh, uh, to find the interference, then we run into a big error. Okay, uh, just uh, maybe.